going to be looking at some software setup. Let's get started. Hey guys, back to the arcade cabinet this week, and I wanted to show you some of the software setup that I've got going on. Uh, and if you're watching this on your computer at home, uh, I suspect you probably want to expand your screen to full screen so you can actually see uh, some of the details here. Um, and if you're watching on your phone, then I guess uh, <laughs> you'll be along for the ride. Um, so I'm going to be using a piece of software called Hyperspin. And what we're looking at here on my desktop is my local C drive. And I created a directory called Hyperspin. And in here is where I've got all of the uh, software set up. Now, I should point out that uh, I went to a uh, YouTube video made by a guy named Mel Boja. And uh, this gave me pretty much all of the information I needed to set up Hyperspin. And uh, I'll leave a link in the description below to this video so you can actually watch this. It's 34 minutes, but it's got a ton of video uh, or a ton of information in the video about how to set up Hyperspin and uh, how to connect the different games and, and get it configured properly. So the plan here was I was going to set up Hyperspin on my main computer. And then what I ended up doing is just copying this entire directory on a thumb drive and then bringing it down to uh, the little Dell Xeno that's going to be the uh, uh, the uh, arcade computer. So um, a couple other locations that are worth mentioning. Uh, there's MAME.dev.org, which is where I downloaded the uh, uh, emulator for uh, for MAME, and then the Hyperspin website, which is hyperspin-fe.com, and a third website called fifthdread.com. Uh, Fifth Dread, I guess, is another guy that's making videos online about arcade cabinets, and he actually has a uh, a one particular file that's worth downloading called Hypermatch, which is a little utility that uh, makes your life a lot easier when uh, configuring Hyperspin for each of the different emulators that you care about. All right, back to the directory here. Uh, Hyperspin, if you don't already know, is an overlay for uh, uh, for all of the different emulators that you have on on your PC. So uh, what it does is it lets you, in a really sort of nice uh, graphical way uh, cycle through and pick any of the emulators that you care about and then once you have an emulator picked you can then cycle through and pick any of the games that you have uh, on your computer so if I launch hyperspin so you can take a look at that and it will take a second to start up here I'll sit through this but it's pretty cool. Hyperspin. So you can see that you get a pretty nifty little uh, way to cycle through any number of emulators. Now, right now. Um, Hyperspin has all of these guys set up, but I don't have any of these emulators loaded except for MAME. So, if I go to MAME and then hit enter to select, you then notice here on the right, you've got um, your game listings here that you, that you can go through. Now, for uh, an example here, I do have, uh, where is it, here it is, I do have a copy of Street Fighter Alpha 3, um, and when it's all configured properly, you've got like a video preview for the game, and then you have the ability to select and play it. Now in my case, um, I'm not going to do that because I don't, um, I think it's actually going to crash my capture software. But this gives you sort of an idea of how this all works. Now, for all of these other uh, options here, I don't have anything configured. Um, so that's why you don't see any kind of preview. And if I was to select one of these, it, it would fail because I don't have any of these games. And these are just um, 
defaulted when I downloaded uh, Hyperspin. And then I'll have to go through there and then clean up all this stuff to only show the games that I have. But it does sort of give you uh, a pretty nifty, you know, way to select stuff. Dragon's Lair, the fantasy adventure. You might be wondering why the Hyperspin screen was so small in relation to the rest of my desktop. Well, uh, what we're looking at here is a uh, is Hyper HQ, and it's the configuration utility that comes with Hyperspin. And what you see uh, in the red box there is uh, the the resolution for the window. Um, when I get this down to the Dell Xeno uh, and actually configured properly and uh, ready to go, then I'll make sure that I have got this full screen enabled checkbox uh, set so that when we're running Hyperspin in the final PC, then it will take up the entire screen and then that will make it look proper. So there are other overlays that you can use, but I thought Hyperspin was sort of the best one that I that I saw. Uh, and I, it seems to be fairly active, which to me means that uh, if I do run into a problem, I'm more likely to get an answer on like a forum or, or something like that, uh, because there are a lot of people using it, which I think is pretty important. Uh, and then overall, I think it just, I think it looks really cool. Uh, and, it, uh, you know, you have to remember that at the cabinet itself, you're going to be using the cabinet controls to navigate and the less interaction that you have with like a keyboard and mouse the better I think so um, I think this that hyperspin interface works really well for that uh, the other thing I like a lot is that it's self-contained uh, so I mentioned before in the beginning of the video that um, you know hyperspin is its own directory and then all of the emulators are installed within it which means that I can get everything configured and set up properly on my computer here at my desk and then once I'm all set and satisfied with that then I can just copy it to a thumb drive and then bring it down to where I need it to go uh, so I think that's really really uh, really cool uh, really convenient because I'd rather do that setup here at my desk than uh, downstairs at my workbench um, so I, I think that works out really well the other thing I should mention is about ROMs and where to get them uh, I will let Google answer those questions for you <laughs> so um, if you're looking for ROMs you can just go to Google and do a search and you will find tons of locations uh, but I won't tell you where to go uh, that's probably where I draw the line uh, there is sort of a gray area when it comes to ROMs and whether or not it's legal or not to use them uh, I'm just gonna say that uh, I'll leave it up to you so you can make your own decisions about uh, about how to use those and where to get them so I think that's going to wrap it up this week uh, for this video. Uh, I will have some time hopefully in the next few days. I do have a couple of days off because of the holiday. And I'm going to try and actually get to building uh, a cabinet. So we'll see how that's going to go. Uh, I did find uh, an updated monitor, uh, which I think is going to work for me. And uh, I need to go ahead and start you know, taking out my old woodworking tools and uh, <laughs> seeing about putting together a cabinet. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have a new video for you guys next week when it comes to uh, anything arcade related. Uh, we'll see how it goes and see how much I can get done over the next few days. Uh, but I will definitely get those out for you. So anyways, check the description below for all the links that I mentioned uh, to each of these websites uh, here, 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 and here. And uh, links for everything else that concerns the channel. Uh, so uh, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I'm going to go to the next one.